Today, I'll show you how to easily blur backgrounds in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link for this image in the video description. In this video, we'll blur the background using three simple steps. The first step is to select the subject and place her on her own layer. So to start with that, I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command or Control J. Then I'll use the Selection Brush tool to make a quick selection. You can use your bracket keys on your keyboard to increase the size of your brush, and then you can go ahead and paint across the subject to select her. If you ever paint too much, you can hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and then just paint over that area to remove it from your selection. So I'll just quickly go ahead and make this selection. Now that I have the selection made, I'm going to refine the selection by pressing Refine in the context toolbar. This will allow us to clean up any of the areas that were missed, like the flyaway hairs. I'll just paint over the flyaway hair areas, and you can see that Affinity starts to add those hairs back in. I'll do that by painting over the edges of the hair. If I see any areas where there's too much selected, you can always change your brush. So you can switch your brush to foreground if you want to add something to your selection. And you can change it to background if you want to remove something from your selection. So you can see that anything that's red is not selected. So we want to see our selection in color here. I'm just going to quickly finish by painting over that last piece of hair. And now we have a pretty good selection made. So I'm going to press apply. And then I'm going to press on the mask icon so that the background is removed on this top layer. Then I'll press Command or Control D to deselect. So at this point, our picture doesn't look any different since we have this duplicate layer beneath. So I'm going to check that off so that we can see how our selection went. So I can see we still have some work to do on our mask to make this look better. To fix our mask, I'm going to select the mask icon here, and then I'm going to use the paintbrush tool to clean up the edges. A lot of times you'll have to do this, cleaning up the edges manually, and it's really not too difficult. Let me just show you quickly how to do this. Select the paintbrush tool, and then make sure that you have a very low flow, and 0% hardness. So now I'm going to zoom in here and with a very small brush, I'm going to paint in black on my mask to remove any excess parts that I don't want included in the selection. If you see any larger areas that you don't want included, feel free to adjust the size of your paintbrush as you go. And if you ever want to add hair back in, you can press X on your keyboard to switch your color to white so that you can reveal that part of the mask again. So white will reveal or add to your mask and black will remove from your mask. I'm just going to continue to paint and add or remove flyaway hairs all around our model. So now I've just gone around and fixed some of those flyaway hairs, and I think this looks a lot better for our selection. So at this point, we now have our subject separated from the background. And we could go ahead and blur the background at this point, but it wouldn't look quite right. I'll just quickly show you how that would look. I'll go to the filters and add a Gaussian blur. And then I'll increase the radius and check on Preserve Alpha. So right now, if you zoom in, you can see some haloing going on around our subject. This is because underneath our main subject layer, we still have the subject in the background. 
So her colors, her skin, and her hat are all being used within this blur so that you can see the colors bleeding out. That really doesn't look right. It's not a natural way to blur an image. So what I'm going to do is remove our model here from the background. To do this, I'll just go ahead and delete this Gaussian blur layer. And then I'm going to show you how to fill in this background area. To fill this in, we first need a selection of our subject. Now, luckily, we've already made a selection of our subject to remove her in the very beginning. And we can use that same selection to fill in the area. So with our background layer still selected, I'm going to hold down Command or Control on my keyboard, and then I'm going to click on the mask icon. And now you can see that that layer has been loaded as a selection. Now, I want to grow this selection to make sure that all of our subject is included in it. I don't want to miss anything. To grow a selection, press Command or Control B. Then you can increase the radius to grow or shrink the selection. I want to grow our selection, and I think that looks pretty good, so I'll press Apply. So this next step is actually pretty cool, and it's something that you might use in other types of edits. What we're going to do is fill the selection with inpainting. So similar to using the inpainting brush tool to remove a blemish, we can fill in this whole area with inpainting to remove the subject. To do that, go to the top of the screen to edit, and then click on inpaint. So now Affinity will take all of the background information that's outside of the selection and fill it in where our subject was. I'm going to press Command or Control D to deselect. Now you can see that if we were presenting this picture just like this, this wouldn't look quite right with these planters in the center of the sidewalk. However, because our subject will be standing on top of those, I don't think that this matters too much. The most important thing is that she is removed from the background so that we don't have that strange haloing when we blur the background. So now it's time for our very last step. We're going to blur the background. I'll go ahead and turn on our subject layer again. And with the background layer still selected, I'm going to go to our filters and then add a Gaussian blur. Now I'm going to bring up the radius, and I'm going to make sure to turn on Preserve Alpha. Preserve Alpha means that the edges of your blur won't get transparent. If you click that, those transparent edges will go away. So now you can raise this or lower it however much you want to get your desired blur amount. And I think that looks pretty nice. To make this look even better, I'm going to use a gradient on this blur layer. So select the Gaussian blur layer, and then go to the gradient tool. So normally in natural photography, where you'll have a blurry background, your subject will be in focus, and everything closest to the camera will be more in focus, and then as you go farther and farther away from the subject, it will get more blurry. Because of that, I want to create this illusion that these bushes in the front are more in focus than the bushes in the back. So with this gradient tool, I'm going to click and drag downward. And now you can see that the background is more blurred than the foreground. I'm just going to drag this forward even more so that they still have some blur on them. And I think that looks pretty nice. So now that the blur has been added, we can add any last adjustments that we'd like. The first adjustment I'm going to make is I'll add a curves adjustment to brighten up our subject. I'll raise the spline to brighten, and then so that this is only applied to our subject, I'll drag it down and to the right of our subject layer. And now you can see that only she is being brightened. I think that's a little too much, so I'll just bring that down. But you can see that once you've separated the subject and background, you can go ahead and adjust each one differently. 
And to finish everything off, I'm just going to add a lens filter. I want to add some nice warmth to this image. I'll just bring down the optical density a little bit. And I'll go ahead and place this underneath the subject so that only the background is being affected. I like that little bit of extra warmth that's been added. And there we have it. Now you can beautifully blur the background of any photo. If you want to learn more affinity tricks, be sure to check out my free course in the video description, where you'll learn 10 simple steps to make any photo amazing. Thanks for watching my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.